discipline can seem like your worst enemy, but in reality, it is your best friend. Discipline. It will make you better and stronger and smarter and faster and healthier than anything else. And most important, it will make you free. Discipline equals freedom. Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be discussing the top five most important factors for gaining size and strength. Now we're going to go through an order from most important to least important of the five, and we're going to start off at number one. Number one is hard work and raw grit. You really can't cheat work. No matter what your genetics are or how good or bad your program is, regardless of whether you're getting six hours of sleep or eight hours of sleep, if you don't put in any effort, you don't show up at all, you can't get any results. You're not going to build muscle with an optimized program that you don't actually show up and put in the effort for. This is also probably what separates a lot of people at the top competitively and in terms of aesthetics for physique. People who look great and excel in a particular sport, whether that's strength, bodybuilding, if you want to call that a sport, Olympic lifting, you name it, these people put in a ton of work. Yes, there's other factors, but obviously the biggest factor is hard work. Number two, now this might be more controversial for some people, but I have to be intellectually honest here and tell you that genetics is the second most important factor. Why is it not number one? Well, if you've got great genetics, you'll never know unless you put in some work. Uh, but at the same time, I think it's very clear that genetics make a bigger difference than just as simple as getting an extra hour of sleep or a little bit more optimized nutrition. There are some people who are just complete genetic freaks when it comes to responding to exercise. Now, that being said, it's a, it's a spectrum. And most of you watching this video, you're probably not the most elite in terms of genetics, and you also aren't the bottom of the barrel, worst of the worst genetics, okay? So regardless of who you are or what your family history is, I don't want you to be black -pilled. That's not the point. I'm not trying to sell you uh, some testosterone uh, clinic to give you an excuse to take TRT or anything like that. But the point is this, even if you have below average genetics, if you put in the work, you'll find out what you're genetically capable of because I guarantee you, you'd be surprised by how big your genetic potential is. Is there a natural limit? I guess so, but it's going to be different for everyone. And chances are, whatever your limit is would take decades and decades and decades to get even 99% close to. So put in the work and yes, your genetics are the second most important factor. What's number three? The third most important factor is your program. Program makes a big difference. Okay, if you're doing a, a bad Athlean X program or a V-Shred program, even worse, uh, or German volume training or some, something that beats the crap out of you, pounds you into the ground, or you know gives you permission to show up and train like a wimp, whatever it is, okay, programs do make a big difference in your training. But I'll tell you this, someone with the best genetics with a bad program is probably going to make more gains than someone with the absolute worst uh, genetics and an optimal program, whatever that means. So programming is extremely important. There are many factors in fitness that you need to take into consideration, such as your recovery, you know, how often are you going to train? What muscles are you going to train and how much volume are you going to do for them? Are you comfortable taking sets close to failure on certain compound movements or should you? You know, isolation movements, are you skipping muscles, that sort of thing? Are you taking into account your leverages, uh, your body's weaknesses? Maybe you have injuries that are exercise related or not in exercise related. Either way, you need to take a lot of things into account to have a good program. So even though programming is not the most important thing, it's not the second most important thing, I'd still say it's in the top three and certainly in the top five. Okay, after programming, Sleep is number four. That's the fourth most important thing in your results, in determining your results for both size and strength. Let me tell you a quick story. One of my clients, female in the past, 
she was going through a difficult time in her life where they were moving from her family was moving from one house to another and work stress, family stress, taking care of uh, elderly parents. Either way, all of this compounding stress in her life, as well as bad habits, accumulated, culminated in her getting only like four, four and a half hours of sleep compared to her normal six. Now, a lot of people tell you six is not a lot, but look, when you have kids, folks, you're going to be losing some sleep. You have responsibilities, work. Not everyone can get a perfect eight or nine hours of sleep, but it's certainly something you should aim for. In her case, six was normal. Six was good. That's a good week. But there was a period of time in her training where it was down to like four, four and a half. What was interesting that I noticed, the numbers on paper, the progressions that I would normally have her push, took her probably one third longer. So amount of progress she could normally do in two sessions had to be spread out to three. And what else was happening? Well, she was getting four, four and a half hours of sleep versus six. So it was almost as if roughly a third less sleep meant roughly a third less gains. I can't prove that it's exactly a proportional one-to-one -one correlation, but it was obvious in her case and in general, less recovery means your body's ability to adapt to exercise is greatly diminished. So sleep is super important. I'd highly recommend you try and get at least seven and a half hours of sleep if you can, eight or nine's even better. Realistically, six is a good minimum to shoot for. And if you're getting less than that, don't be surprised when you hit a plateau in your training. And the fifth, most important, okay, last but not least, nutrition. Okay, so these are all things you've probably heard before. I didn't expect any of these to surprise you, and I didn't want to clickbait anyone, but of course, we can't not mention nutrition. Nutrition is extremely important. You need to get your macronutrients in, you need to get micronutrients in. Uh, if you're skipping meals, if you're not putting any effort into how much protein you're getting into your diet, then that may affect your, your training, especially long term. In the short term, right, as a complete beginner, you're going to respond so well to training, it might be the case that you can get away with skipping breakfast or not tracking protein or calories at all and still getting great results or not even intentionally going into your way to be in a calorie surplus, but over time, nutrition is going to matter a lot. So nutrition, does it make a bigger difference than sleep? I think it's up in the air. I think they're both very important. Uh, but either way, of the five, nutrition is important, but I'd say it's the least of the five. Bonus round. Okay, notice that none of the five things I mentioned in today's video were supplements. That's because supplements are pretty much a scam uh, for you as an ordinary person, or even if you're competitive, you really don't need a lot of supplements. Okay, you just don't. They're a gimmick for the most part. They're overhyped. Even here on YouTube Fitness, people are sponsored by supplement companies. Look, it's no surprise that when someone's sponsored by a company, they're going to swear by it because they've got an ax to grind financially. I am not, and so I don't. Let me tell you something. Of the gains that I've made in the last couple of years, last two to three years, as a natural, the gains that I've made have been almost completely without supplements. The only thing I've really supplemented is occasionally caffeine pills in addition to having coffee most days of the week, but even then maybe one cup per day, and having protein shakes occasionally, irregularly, infrequently. And when I do have protein, it's like 30 grams of protein supplement. So in the last few years of training where I've gotten most of my results, I have not had any creatine. I've not had any turkesterone, any sleeping pills. I've not, I've not taken any pre-workout, okay? I've avoided all of that stuff like the plague. Not that I think it's harmful or dangerous, but I just see it as a waste of time. And it's really had no difference on my gains. I feel plenty strong. I sleep great. I recover from my exercises. When I don't, I know it's because I'm pushing myself too hard. It's obvious on paper what I'm doing wrong or not sleeping. I know where I screwed up and it's not supplements. And that's pretty much all I've got for you guys today. So thank you for joining me. I want you to consider these five very important things. Of course, genetics, you can't choose your parents, but you can certainly work hard. You can adjust your program. You can try and sleep a little more and you can work on your diet. That's the take home message for today. Regardless of who you are, you can make awesome gains, especially if you focus on these things. All right, take care and I'll see you guys in the next one.